Hey, Patrick. Hey, morning. Is the hmm, high innocence autopilot? I'm, I'm not sure if it's a bot or uh... well anyway ah uh, oh we have nine hi nine hi good to have you Yeah. Let's see. We have if, if, if we get more people join us and uh, can start in a short moment. Ah, yeah, it is AI. Okay. Uh, it's interesting. I remember actually the I think the first time the innocence autopilot icon connected, it was actually a person, and uh, I guess then it turned. It was out. innocent. It was innocent. Great. It actually says that it's his ball. Yeah. Yeah. Notes. Yeah. Right. Like I'm AI assistant helping innocent greats taking notes. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. I see. It's like personal bot. Yeah. But I don't think it's actually for personal reasons. I don't know. Otherwise, oh, who knows? Maybe I'm just too un untrustful to these AI bots. Or maybe it's actual genuine person just saving their time. Anyway, uh, if you hear us, Innocence other pilot, it, <laughs> we'll be happy if you sometime jo join us in person if, if these words get you through the transcript. Anyway, let's get started. So I'll share my screen. Uh, just a short moment. Close up all the unimportant windows I have. I think that's good. All right, so uh, welcome to July 20, 2023, RSVCX community call. Uh, Antitrust policy of Hyperledger is in effect. And um, and um, yeah, let's get started. So uh, I don't think there's any uh, introductions today. Uh, there's no new people. Um, Obligatory uh, kind of um, well, I, I added this uh, in, inspired by other other meetings I've attended this uh, recently. I, I added this kind of point just uh, to make sure that uh, if if you guys have anything um, on mind you would like to add to agenda, you can like uh, just, uh, uh, po point it out now so we can adjust it. Um, I added some stuff uh, just a couple of minutes ago to the end meeting discussion, oh, cool. but just to just to keep in mind. But mm -hmm. they they're already there, so nothing new okay. to that. All right. Uh, so I guess that that would be it. Um, uh, yeah, no, nevertheless, if you if you if you if if someone would uh, have an idea and or a thought you would like to put out there, uh, feel free anytime during the meeting. Nevertheless, 
yesterday we had a presentation on Aries board group call. So the recording is available there. If you would like to see, we did a presentation of Aries VCX. Uh, I, uh, there will be uploaded uh, a diagram we created and I also put it here as kind of a um, status overview of what we are, what we did, what we are doing, what we are planning to do. Uh, uh, next up, uh, I kept this item here in case that uh, uh, kind of option, optional update. So uh, you see that uh, we have only nine here. So man, if you would like to give an update, uh, you know, you, you can. Uh, would you like to uh, say a few words about, uh, you know, what, what's your latest uh, progress is? Hello. Yes. Um, so yesterday in the Slack chat, I was recommended to look into uh, feature flags and to basically change the implementation of the database backend from an any database to selecting one particular database at compile time rather than uh, selecting the database at runtime. So. I looked into uh, feature flags, and I think I've implemented that in on the uh, server now. I've sent a link in chat. So basically, what I do is I have some uh, feature flag. I mean, feature flag based uh, code. Uh, when you give a feature flag saying, "Okay, we're going to activate MySQL," then it's going to only load the code that's required to uh, give a MySQL pool and so on. So for Postgres, it'll do Postgres. By default, I have activated MySQL. And if someone says they want Postgres, they can activate Postgres. If someone says they want any pool, that is runtime uh, selected database, then they can do that also. Yeah, so that's where I am right now, since mm -hmm. yesterday. Right. Cool, cool. And we had lots of discussion about like the overall architecture and the protocols and stuff like that, right? Is yes. uh is uh what, what's your kind of uh, you know f maybe feeling of like do you feel like you understand like the big picture? Like do you have some like uh, kind of uh, shadow areas where you feel like you still need to kind of uh, shed some more light on that it's a little bit mysterious. What's your kind of, you know, uh, feel or thought on the overall project scope and like the, the work ahead and things like that? Right. Um, I, I think I'm getting a hang of it right now, like especially on one side working on the server. And then we had like uh, the discussion on Tuesday, you explained through uh, the connection protocol and the whole flow of the mediator uh, with the uh, RFCs. So I do have some understanding of it right now. Of course, uh, the interaction with Aries VCX code, that for me right now is uh, a blur. But mm -hmm. I guess over time, when I actually look into the code, then it'll make more sense. So right now, the Aries VCX parts, the methods that I'll be calling there, that's uh, foreign to me. Yes. Uh, right. When I dive into the code, maybe it'll make more sense. Like, mm. I'll have to back and forth with you all to understand how Aries VCX works and stuff. I did mm. have a session. Uh, so last Friday, uh, I had a session with uh, Miroslav about the message uh, crate, I think. Yes. Uh, I think that was actual. Yeah, yeah, with Bogdan, I think. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry. So we had the session about the message crate, and we discussed in length uh, about it. And yes, <laughs> some parts were uh, quite complex. But yeah, I mean, I'm getting a feel for it now. Uh, with time, I guess, uh, looking into the concepts more and reading about it, 
uh, I think it'll make more sense. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, sounds good. That's that's great. Uh, actually, now as as you mentioned, like Aries V six is kind of a blur for you. It brings me the reminds me of the idea from George Mulhern uh, about creating like Ellie's Tabor CLI demo, and we just got freshly merged PR uh, about like a kind of simple message relate, essentially like extremely simplistic mediator, if we can even call it that way. It kind of serves like ultimately it kind of serves its purpose, but it's like a few lines of code essentially. Uh, but this will make it much simpler to create some sort of sh sh kind of a showcase uh, of uh, how Aries V6 can be consumed. So I think we can finally now like address this and actually create some like simple Alice Faber demo. And that, it, that I guess the earlier we do it, then perhaps uh, it, it can actually be helpful for you as well. Uh, you know, ahead of starting the integration of Aries VCX with the Mediator code. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, I'll look in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for update. We don't have Swapnail, so uh, and ne neither uh, George. So uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll skip over this one. I can I'm not really in position right now to cover it, but I just know that there's a PR for a while and it's been progressing somewhat. There have been some comments, so we'll see how this goes. Um, all right, uh, so to back to the more uh, mundane part of the uh, meeting. Uh, so we had a release 057 uh, recently, yesterday. Uh, you had to have to adjust this uh, change log, this auto generated, but uh, it can be a bit uh, pretty fight and structured. So we'll do that. There's lots of stuff um, in, went into that because we didn't have release for uh, it was uh, at least a month, maybe more. So uh, I'll, I'll kind of uh, make this nicer and it'll be easier to understand uh, what all the uh, stuff went in here. Uh, then we had the message relay uh, merge from George, uh, as mentioned before. And lastly, uh, there was a number of uh, micro or like mini fixes, uh, some uh, refactoring, some uh, testing discrepancies in terms of uh, for tails, dear and tails file variable names. Uh, then removing unused constants, and uh, lastly, some uh, CI fix. Um, then in progress, we have a, a kind of, a, well, rather not, not really in progress right now. We have paused uh, credits to anon credit migration. We have PR for it, uh, but it's more of a draft, just a reference point for the future. Uh, and we pause this. We 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 need to uh, kind of get get uh, clear up some things about uh, intentions of anon creds and the and the plan, just to make sure that our plan and our approach is is right. Uh, I don't know, George uh, Bogdan, do you want to drop any any more words on on this topic? Mm, yeah, I don't know. I guess we've been discussing about this at length, but. Overall, uh, as you outlined, it's pretty much about kind of getting a better understanding of what the plans are regarding all the underlying libraries and how to align or even maybe shape them uh, ourselves or help with that. Um, and also our line, out, align our uh, goals and approach to, to better fit into that because we haven't really done that so far and it's kind of biting it. It's, biting us in the back so uh, the the sooner the better kind of kind of thing yeah all right uh next up the uh, data exchange protocol is uh well it's simply in progress still uh there's a uh, lots of back and forth uh, i think last week i had mira uh it was he, he said uh that uh i got some 
test passing, but uh, he's uh, is not uh, satisfied with the implementation, so he's uh, kind of reiterating and trying to find a bet better ways uh, before he kind of pushes it out there into Ether publicly. So this is still in progress. Uh, next up, um, I personally have uh, another small PR to clean up some discrepancies about tails, do slash tails file variables in issuer's code that might be actually breaking change, like a uh, breaking change, but without uh, much impact, I believe. Uh, and lastly, uh, uh, Bogdan started uh, VDR tools, credits, world migration, like adding the API to the Node.js. Uh, is is that uh, is that uh, we have a PR for it, but there were some comments. Is it is it in progress or uh, are you, are we yeah, yet planning? It's done since yesterday. Ah, it's done since yesterday. It's just the those tests that have intermittent fails. Um, right. The the building ones they're not related to the tests or anything like that. So I added the test for the the wrapper or the function exposed through the wrapper and mm -hmm. it all seems to work fine so it can be it can be reviewed and even merged should yeah. be should be in order cool, cool, cool. all right upcoming work we have the cli demo we want to do the cli demo i think if we do it as soon as possible it can kind of accelerate nyan uh for sure with uh, the mediator aries v6 integration the state pattern, I mean, I think I should remove that. That's like old topic. We all know this is happening. We are doing it in did exchange. Uh, we are gonna do it in other protocols, but I mean, technically it's still upcoming. Okay, and uh, ATH back channel update, uh, that's actually in progress. I'm gonna move this item because uh, Mero is busy with that. He is a first step as, as a part of uh, integrating, uh, implementing did exchange. Uh, I found it useful to uh, basically start testing with uh, testing the did exchange implementation against Akapai and other implementations right away. So, but the first step to even be able to do that was uh, just update the uh, RSV6 version in the ATH. So, I believe this is done and now it's in a stage of like adding. Uh, the support for did exchange into the AATH back channel, uh, kind of in a parallel with actually implementing did exchange. Uh, and yeah, then we have we're coming to the end meeting discussions and uh, this, uh, items added from Bogdan. So I'll, I'll leave it to you to to moderate or what you wanted to have say about these. Yeah. So um, since that. The, the migrators for the ex exposing it through the Node.js was done yesterday. I started working on the, getting kind of getting the connection protocol up to speed with the, let's say, the design choice, choices that we've made regarding state machines. Um, so the connection protocol was pretty much the first and only so far to implement the type state pattern. And We've further iterated on that to kind of um, change the states from sending a message to uh, just generating the message and leaving it up to the user to do that. Um, and I believe Mira is basically shaping the did exchange state machine protocol implementation uh, to fit that design. There's George's PR on the holder. It's kind of being stale for a while, but anyway, he started in in that fashion as well and um yeah i kind of wanted to get uh, some hands-on experience with this and kind of see the challenges and all that um and the main thing that i guess represents uh i don't know or, or poses some problems is what exactly should happen from from a consumers consumer of the library point of view with the outcome of the state machine or how are they supposed to even process it so ultimately regardless of the protocol and the state machine there are pretty much three things that can happen you like you get a message you locate your state machine and you want to process it so once that processing starts there are basically three possible outcomes you either everything either everything uh, works well and you get your new you get the state machine to the new state, 
or some things fail and but that doesn't necessarily um, terminate the, the protocol it's just i know it could be reprieable uh, so you still have your state machine in your old state and that's fine um, there are further actions that you can do based on that but maybe send a problem report or not uh, i don't know that's debatable and it's not necessarily the point here but the, and the other, the third outcome is basically that I know some sort of fatal error occurred, and the protocol instance should be terminated completely and is not retriable. So it's basically success, retriable, or like error but retriable, and error but fatal. Um, and I've been thinking about like how to kind of deal with this because this is going to be sort of a universal thing now obviously for instance the, the connection protocol doesn't even have like a failure state it doesn't terminate there's no fatal error uh, that can technically occur um, but I, I believe the this this actually became a topic of discussion when george started working on the holder implementation which apparently does have some um, like failed states where the the instance of the protocol is not supposed to be uh, to be retried, so it should be terminated. Um, and nevertheless, it's it's a matter of how could we perhaps approach that in a more organized and uniform fashion, since having all these different outcomes. Like if you take a singular transition in consideration the transition might be successful all the time or it might be successful and um successful or retriable or it might be successful or fatal or it might be all three and having differences in these result where these return types from the transition um can make it especially confusing for consumers of the library right because hmm. in the end if you look at, at, at the ecosystem and the other implementations and that's maybe something that i'll go that i want to talk about more in the regarding the second point but they're more like batteries included or there are more abstractions going on so that consumers are not that concerned with the actual implementations or the functionalities of the protocols and whatnot because frankly they don't even have to be like people generally just want an agent to work and just do its magic under the hood um now obviously having the flexibility of changing stuff around to better suit your needs and your use cases is is a great thing um but i'm certain that the majority of people just want a working thing um and basically as a consequence of that when you have the all these transitions from all the protocols and all the state machines and they each kind of return a different thing that you have to handle differently because they're different um it kind of makes things convoluted and complex and hard to keep track of and hard to understand again maybe not for us as developers but we have to kind of consider the people that would be using this as well so um I've been mainly thinking about the uniform approach of um, kind of a, a uniform, res yeah, a uniform result, if you will, of the state machine, uh, of a state machine transition. So regardless of the protocol and state machine and the state, it would basically return an enum with these variants. And there's also the the idea of what what should you do as a consumer if you get an error in a transition, right? And I want to think about that a second. I want us to think about that a second because if you get an error in the state machine, especially given the type state pattern that we employ and the fact that it's a consuming operation, um, you cannot just error out and propagate the error you know, to the upper levels of the library or the consumer code because the consumer is supposed to do something based on the outcome of the state machine transition. So consider that 
if you get a successful transition, you might want to update your state machine and your permanent storage or database or your cache or whatever. But you definitely need to do something based on that. So if you get a success, you need to do some stuff. If you get a retriable error, uh, I know a retriable outcome. So you get an error, but the outcome is retriable. Now, what we kind of want to do is return the old state machine as is. Um, but that might also imply that I don't know if you have some in-memory cache where you took the state machine out of, you might want to put it back. Um, so again, you might want to do something based on that. Uh, additionally, I don't know if you have a, a problem report that comes out of the state machine, you might want to send that. Um, so it's not just a matter of, okay, I got an error, it's a result, I'm just going to use the question mark and throw this up the, or technically down the stack. Um, and then if you, if, like if the state machine just terminates, you get a fatal error, then again, you need to do some stuff. You might want to clean up the state machine instance from your permanent storage, from your cache, because that's not supposed to exist anymore. There's not that much that you can do with it. You can definitely leave it there if you want, but I assume people would generally just want to get rid of it. Um, so nevertheless, there's stuff that you need to do in practically every case of this. Um, and what that means is that even if we kind of consider just returning a result with some stuff, I'm not even sure that's like, I, I tend to believe that's not really the, um, that's not really the, um, the way to go about this. What did you write down? Assumption to remove state machine on failure. What was that? Ah, yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Ah, it was just a personal note, just a minor remark, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. C can you please repeat your last sentence? Yeah, so if if the transition, like if you encounter a fatal error, you might want to do something with that. But a different thing than what you would do with um, a recoverable error, let's say, mm. you know. What what do you do? What do you want to do with that? It's absolutely up to the consumer. Like whether they want to just remove the state machine completely from all their storages, or I don't know, log some intricate stuff based on what happened. I don't know. Mm. But you definitely want to do something, and the odds are that it's going to be something different than what you would do from if you if you encounter the recover uh, recoverable error. Right. I yeah, know. Yeah. Do you, I, I, do you think that's fair? Yeah, it, it, I think it's fair and make, makes okay. sense. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, this is pointing towards like the maybe pointing towards uh, the kind of uh, custom enum, right? Kind of uh, exactly. will be one solution or implementation right. for this kind of idea, right? Yeah. I, I guess that could work. Honestly, it, it, it's a uh, speed. We don't have a mirror here. Uh, uh, he's uh, kind of uh, more more in the bushes, like in in a war, in an active war zone about this topic right now. So he might have like more opinions than me. Uh, I mean, but... this is still like just a discuss at the discussion level. Then yeah, yeah, it would be. I mean, we're definitely gonna get him. Get his opinion on this it would be it would have been nice indeed if he was here but i don't think it's that big of a deal right now yeah um, it, it makes sense to discuss me. this next week as well it, it makes sense Sorry. to me it's on top of my mm -hmm. head like uh on top of my head i i can't really tell what are those retrieval and what are those fatal errors honestly do you have any like I know, I know it probably I'm sure this is being described. Uh, I don't know, if you open the holders, the holder um, pull request, mm. the one that George was working on, um, there's been discussion there about these things. Um, let me see if. Um, Or 
parts uh, for this. Um, yeah, um, so when, when the, after the offer is received, and I guess the, um, the request is sent, Apparently, per the old API, the state machine could transition into failed or request sent. Now, so, sorry, um, is, is there some comment I can find about this? So I there, can... there's actually there are some diagrams that you made. Uh, Maybe that was on the top. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess this would be an example of. Uh, you know, a fatal error, I assume, because once you transition to the failed state, you're not supposed to do anything like, with that state machine anymore. Well, or at least that was my understanding. Mm, well, let's see. I mean, I, now when I'm looking at this, I'm uh, somewhat confused because this, the diagram I did here, it looks like it's doing like IO in the, Transition. Yeah, disregard that. That's not important. Uh, it's okay. not necessarily about that. Mm. Um, this was before we were discussing the IO thing. Ah, but okay, preparing um, data for requests. Yeah, yeah, it's merely just a matter of yeah, like an example of a, I don't, final but failed state mm. that can occur. Like if, right? like we know ahead of time that if even if we do this multiple times, we'll never succeed, right? Because it some like uh maybe it's issue with the request itself or something like that right right um so i guess that's that's the kind of thing um so that would be like a, a fatal error right but then you could have stuff like i don't know ledger communication error where it's just a matter of networking a networking problem and that can be by all means retriable right so um but, but uh if we do like like I assume that like only IO like in the state machine would be. Hmm. Can I assume that it would be it's only just the an wallet? example? It's just an example, but yeah, but it's, 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 I think it's still important to like uh, uh, I don't know, understand like what could it be actually in practice. So like it, I think it wouldn't be it wouldn't be sending like response because we are not doing that. I think it also wouldn't be ledger communication. Technically, it could be wallet. Uh, that's like the kind of thing, like if you want to make it really, I guess, uh, top notch. Why wouldn't it be we have, communication? Why wouldn't it be a problem? Be, wallet can be, I, I mean, that's the, I, I, for me, that that's the type of IO we will still keep in state machines. And that can technically fail because it's IO, right? Right. So that's, I guess, right. that, that's the only actually case in my mind where like retriable error could technically be returned because you couldn't reach your wallet because it's MySQL database or something. But I right. can't think of any other cases because everything else seems to be deterministic. Like you got state, you got some input data, it works or it doesn't work. The only non-deterministic part is the wallet. So technically that could be like, retriable error right uh so that's that's again an example of that so um yeah it's basically like a matter of kind of having a uniform approach for these um <clears throat> and like the the thing with that um is that it's I know it's it's a nice thing to do. Um, I kind of drafted something. It's by all means in a very early draft state. But um, if I could share my screen, maybe. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I mean, what comes to my mind? Sorry, uh, just just a random thought is like having the retriable error gives us like option to actually. Yeah, it gives us option to have IO in state machines. Like if we actually find out in during the implementation of whatever verifier or I don't know, whatever futures actually protocol is gonna be, that like hmm, it's gonna be it'll, it'll be like really a lot more convenient like for the users if you know the ledger communication, some sort of DID resolution was actually in the state machine based on the 
based on the message received, then we technically, yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking do about. the IO inside and return retrieval error if IO fails. Uh, wait, what? Uh, <laughs> I, I lost you for a second there. So you were saying that it would be um, convenient for consumers if we had the ledger interaction within the state machine? Yeah, so I mean... Which the, implies the, IO. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying right. that like, it, it, like having the retrieval error gives us kind of a backdoor, like uh, a, a, an option to put an IO into a state machine if we deem it as uh, you know right. best to go because if we don't have right. retrieval then we if we don't have retrieval and we have io then any io error would become like fatal or other way yeah. around if everything is retrieval then even fatal errors are retrieval and it's like really stupid bad for right for consumers right so either way you kind of get a kind of a bad solution but with a three three uh, retrieval and non-retrieval, you can technically have IO errors and non-IO errors. Exactly, yeah. And there's basically maybe another simpler example, um, like based on the thread ID, you're supposed to verify that, okay, the message that you got is, um, you know, on the thread ID of this protocol instance. And if it doesn't match, it's not necessarily the end of the world. There's nothing wrong with the state machine. You just got the wrong message. And that's their problem, not yours. You can maybe send problem report or whatever, but um, it's not something that went wrong with the state machine or I don't know. Um, nevertheless, so yeah, basically we could have something like this, um, which like I said, it basically has the okay variant, which has the new state, the fail variant that has the old state and maybe a problem report or an error. Let's not nitpick on this. Maybe we could have four variants instead, one that has a problem mm. report and one that has an error. And then the aborted or the fatal or whatever uh, mm. variant that basically has, honestly, I'm not even sure if it has to have something. I'm, I'm starting to doubt those failed states as well. Like what are you even supposed to do with those? Um, there's not really that much that you can do, but let's assume that we have some failed states in the state machine. So that's what you would get returned here. Uh, so, um, so I'll just drop a note here, you know, because, uh, and that relates to the, you know, note in my uh, uh, sublime you were asking about, mm. uh, uh, wrote like, that it, it seemed like you had the assumption that when the state machine fails, like you will throw it away. but. I think generally that's not true because you own some sort of like book, you know, keeping track of what was happening in the even for mobile use cases. You often want to have like kind of a list of events uh, mm -hmm. and have actual name for it. Uh, and, and you would want to see like, you know, you failed to share credential or some something went wrong. Things like that. And, and on the backend, likewise, like, uh, you know, as a, as a, I don't know, as an issuer, I want to know if I failed to issue 10 credentials. I want to keep uh, track of that. So just 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 a note that I think those failed states, failed states, my opinion, are important. I'm not saying they're not important, but the what I'm trying to get at is are they important in the context of the state machine? states or are they important just as some events that you keep track of because they're not the same thing they, that doesn't necessarily mean that um having like you might as well just get some sort of an error here right and that's an error a fatal error and you know exactly what went wrong but without needing to i don't know update your state machine or delete it or whatever you want to do like the the bookkeeping doesn't necessarily mean that you have to maintain an instance of that state machine and the failed state necessarily uh, it can it, be then it can be then confusing because you will have a state machine left in like non failed state i know some like whatever request send or... yeah which is why i was saying you could basically delete that and just keep track of the like the event that the, this whole protocol instance failed 
but not necessarily as part of the state machine. Hmm. Okay, let's 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 maybe move on. But now. Nevertheless, like I, I also understand what you're saying, and it's not necessarily bad. Like even if you have like a failed state and maybe keep it I don't know, together with the other states of the state machine, and you have some other bookkeeping job that maybe archives old records or something like that. Um, that also seems perfectly fine, honestly. Um, it's it's not like there would be an, an issue with that, and maybe I don't know. In some regards, it might even be clearer. I don't know. Um, so that's definitely a matter for debate. But the the bottom line that I was trying to get at is that you definitely want to have a distinction between these and these, and regardless of which variant you get, you want to do something with it, right? So if you have a failed state here, that means you still have to update your failed state like your state machine instance in maybe your database or your cache because the next time otherwise like you said the state machine would remain would remain in its old state like request sent and then you're not supposed to have it like that right um i don't know does that make sense uh sorry you, you you're not supposed to have it have it like what so I, I i was basically trying to get at that whatever variant you would get you know one of these variants that you get out of the state machine you have to do something with it you don't just propagate it someplace else you know or, yeah, yeah. or the error you don't just propagate the error someplace else you first need to do something with this um whichever it is so if it's a success, you update the state machine. If it's a fatal error, again, you need to update the state machine. So you set it to be in a failed state. Um, and if it's like retriable, then mm. you might want to do something with the old state, maybe send a problem report, maybe log the error, maybe do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so that's kind of made me think about this. Um, um, I'm actually thinking that there's like this problem report or error. I'm maybe thinking of flattening this and just having four variants in here. And the reason for that is um, like, I think it should be our responsibility to generate, I know, standard problem reports for things that we are aware happened. Um, but not necessarily all, all errors result in a problem report. So. Mm. That's why I think it might be helpful to have a distinction. Like sometimes you will return the old state and a problem report that the consumer can decide to send or not. Or and in other cases, you return the old state machine. So it's still a retriable error, but the error is not really meant to be a problem report. Like if, if the communication with the wallet fails, that's not a reason to send a problem report to the other party. The other party doesn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah that's right. Right. Um, yeah, so so that would be that. So you can consider maybe four variants here, uh, just for the sake of flattening this. Um, I'm wondering if if ever you know with the failed state, which I consider that's supposed to represent the kind of retriable error, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you would actually time. ever send a problem report, you know, when you get retriable kind of a error, because if it's retriable, that means that uh, some issue must have happened. You know, some issue must have happened. Like, uh, I That's think a very good point on, on, on yeah. your end. Like, typically mm -hmm. with the IO, as I as I meant, I I feel like we could even. I, I'm not sure. It might might be true. Not, not with the yeah. IO. If something happens with the IO, that's not the other party's problem. I yeah, yeah. It. But I feel like the but... retriable errors will be 19. I don't know, 100 or if not 199% IO errors. I just can't think of anything else than IO for retrieval kind of error. Like I said, the thread ID that doesn't match. Mm, but uh, if it doesn't match, then. They see like the whole message, such, like, but fun, that's their like, problem. Like, mm, but how would. Like it can be also your problem. You actually don't know. Maybe you just like uh, did a bad job with like matching the correct state machine, and now you are sending uh, problem report to you know maybe some someone else or like you you did a, you, you know you did a, 
uh, just uh, you 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 did, you wrote the buggy code on top of this, and you match the wrong state machine based on a, a message you receive. I would try to process that me that message with the state machine you incorrectly found in your database, let's say. And now it throws like, oh, non-matching thread ID and you send a problem report, but it'll be like, actually, you know, actually it's just ended up being kind of confusing because there should I mean, be- you, you have to do something problem. with it. I don't know if this is the only case, but I'm certain that there are a lot of instances where you're supposed to kind of send a problem report um, without necessarily meaning that your protocol is terminated like okay yeah your use case is valid but um mm, i i then I, it, it might as well be the other use case where the other party sent the wrong message and you send them a problem report so they can be aware of the problem or i don't know, help them it. well i think once the problem report is sent like um it's it, it's I don't think those, I, I haven't seen protocol, which is kind of like have this kind of uh, uh, recovery kind of stuff in it. Uh, like it, it sounds like, I mean, it sounds great, uh, like very robust, but I don't think that actually in Aries community right now, there's uh, this kind of, uh, you know, even in the on the RFC level, typically when the problem re report is sent, then you switch state to some sort of failed state, and it's kind of the end. I'm looking right now at the credential issuance 1.0. Um, hold on, where are these diagrams? And well, mm. actually, you know, in those diagrams, they don't really even like I mentioned the unexpected conditions. Like there's a problems report like taking a place there. Uh, they're mentioned mm -hmm. in those diagram in uh, issue credential 0036, for example. But uh, if you get a non, they, they didn't like draw in a di diagram the kind of cases, edge cases. Like if you get a nonsense message, you send a problem report, you know. I mean, so, they said something like, if an issuer might offer a credential for a price that the holder is unwilling to pay, all errors are modeled with the problem report message, easy to anticipate errors, reset the flow. Uh, I think I'm still sharing my screen right now. <laughs> okay, let me maybe bring this up here. Uh, all right. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Issuance abandoned. So does that mean that hmm. okay. Well, fair enough. So we could argue that um, then there's like if you get a retriable error, there's not even a, a problem report to send. You might want to send a problem report if you get to that completely failed state. Like the, yeah, the, I, I think so because that it does implies, make sense. That implies sense. you receive bad input, right? And you want to tell them, oh, like, hey, you send me like fair enough. fair enough. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, okay, so I guess then in that case, it would be something like I don't know, maybe this error, and then maybe um, various VCX error, and then. I don't know, maybe an option problem report. And this is a generic here because the connection protocol uses a different problem report. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you might not necessarily generate the problem report out of this. So I guess having it as an option is a good idea. Um, okay, so, so there's that. Um, yeah, that's basically the, the overall idea of this. Um, and I think that would make it, it would, it would come with less cognitive complexity because in all these cases, like these things can, these are the things that can happen out of the state machine, of any state machine, of any protocol, right? So um, 
whatever you like whatever you're doing or whatever protocol you're in or state machine you're in or whatever message you're processing these are pretty much the outcomes that you're going to be facing um and i think it makes it easier for consumers especially to kind of reason with what they need to do um based on this mm -hmm. outcome as well as kind of making them do something with the outcome and not uh, not just getting an error and okay i'm just gonna question mark that and <laughs> this is uh this is it yeah yeah that i mean sounds good now let's uh let's uh sync up with Mira and like see what kind of uh what he thinks about this what what kind of uh, he also ha i i know i remember he also has some sort of state machine result kind of structure or enum uh, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it looks like so we can kind of compare it and discuss further right. yeah and maybe we can discuss a bit about the the other topic um and Essentially, I'm, I'm thinking about, I've been thinking since the, the discussion yesterday uh, about the fact that we are kind of making a library, whereas the other people are making a framework. Mm. And when you think about it, I think it might be, there might be a fairly good reason why everybody else is making a framework and not a library. And I think it's because essentially there are quite a limited amount of let's call them moving parts in in all these in all this Aries ecosystem, I guess. Like, okay, there are the protocol specifications. So the protocols are kind of supposed to behave. Like whatever language you implement them, there's practically supposed to behave the way they are described there. Um, like the moving parts would ultimately be maybe the ledger, the wallet, um, the storage for the state machines and whatever mechanism you use to receive and send a message but apart from that i don't really think there are other things that are let's say that there that there would even be a reason to have to deal with other things apart from that maybe there's more but nevertheless it, it i think there are ultimately a limited amount of things um so because i was thinking of okay, this would be a uniform approach and would be um, of a less cognitive effort to, um, to consumers. Mm. But ultimately, what if we could even make this less of a cognitive effort for users? I think uh, this is definitely something... Uh... I think this was also Miro's concern and like why he's, uh, you know, he's coming back and forth. He's not satisfied because... I, I feel like he find it too complicated. He he invented some sort of like small helpful layer on top of the state machine to make it easier for the consumers. But then at the same time, he did he didn't like the kind of uh, you know inconsistency in the approach. Like now there's like something new, something extra on top of that. Right. Like it's uh, just asymmetry. It's not beautiful. Um, and what you're saying, like, uh, you know, with the library as a framework, yeah, I think you're right. Maybe we'll eventually like make a full circle because like we came from framework where, you know, we did like, uh, it was like super convenient, you know, the LiveCX is like supposed to be, the original LiveCX was supposed to be like super convenient. It handled agency for you. It like, you know, Coupled the connection protocol with the agency, you really didn't have to like think about somehow integrating them. You didn't have to deal with like fetching the messages and stuff like that. But then at the end of the day, we actually wanted to have that like kind of extra control. So we had to start like taking it out, start downloading the messages ourselves, and then putting in manually to connection, you know, to connection state machine stuff like that. And that was desirable because on, like on the upper layers, we kind of needed that extra control to for for reasons tm and but um, I, I honestly don't think that's what makes the framework honestly yeah, yeah. so right now the difference between like mm. there's actually a kind of small and well defined difference between uh, us as a library and aries vcx as a framework and mm. that's particularly these 
I don't know, these are called state machines that consumers would have to deal with yeah. uh, and all these possible states and all these possible results and whatever. Um, because ultimately, like a framework, like a library you use in whatever way you want, a framework does a well-defined thing with pluggable components, right? And there's already, we, we already kind of have the pluggable components pretty well-defined, like I said, the ledger, the wallet, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that, that you can just provide yourself as a consumer. And the only thing that's really standing between the, the current state of the art and, and a more... Um, and a consumer friendly approach is, are, are these state machines and their complexity. Mm. But when you come to think about it, like I, like I was saying uh, before, I'm sure that most of the people that use this right now have used it and will use it in the future. Mm. They will just want a thing to work. And that kind of brings me to maybe having some sort of interface for handling messages and it kind of ties to the way the messages crate has been designed a bit. And it actually makes the state machines, um, it might end up making the state machines simpler. So kind of stick with me here a bit. Mm -hmm. But and it, it might take a bit longer. So I don't know if you guys have time. If not, we can maybe discuss this next week. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, so the, the, the overall lifetime of of a message, right, would be you get the message um, and then, I don't know, you, you might want to, I don't know, you need to kind of see what message it is and get a state machine that's associated to that, um, I don't know, that instance of the protocol that you got a message for. And if things match up, you basically and you basically try to process, <clears throat> sorry, try to process the message, right? Um, and what that would mean is basically that um, you would have these message handlers that expect a particular message and a particular state machine. And given the fact that we use the type state pattern, the state machine would be in a particular state. So you basically put these things in and that's where your messaging process, yeah, your, your message processing starts. And we can actually separate. Remember how we were talking about the IO being in the state machine and that kind of messing things up because the state machines are consuming. Well, mm -hmm. what if you actually could do the IO in here, but outside mm -hmm. of the state machine transition and the state machine, machine transition would pretty much become unfallible because you first try to gather all the pieces that you need to get to the next state. If that fails, you never even touch the state machine. Right, so there's no need to basically take it out and put it back, or return the old state, or do whatever you need to do. Um, like this whole, this whole thing was would essentially just not happen um, because all the all the I/O and all the failures that can occur essentially happen a layer on top of the state machine, and the state machine would basically be there just to keep track of like where we are in the protocol, which in the end that's what state machines are for. Um, yeah, so now the beauty of this in a way would be we can provide sort of like default built-in implementations of, of these message handlers for all the messages that we, you know, support and all the states of the state machines, which we will ultimately do anyway, but we just incorporate that in the state machine itself. But people could maybe also provide their own. Like if you want to override or just use something else, uh, for a particular message, or you might want to, I don't know, process the decorators differently or something like that, then you could provide your own implementation and just not use the one from the framework or the library, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this would even abstract away all the stuff in, in, in a way, because I'm thinking that if we go to this, if you go, if we go this route, to simplify things, we could even have this kind of state machine handler. The interface of this is debatable. Again, this remove thing was maybe in the, I don't considering the fact that you might want to remove a failed state machine, but this can just as well go away. And what do you do? You just insert it with the failed state. And if the user wants to do something with that and remove it, they can do it later on. It's their problem. Um, but basically, given this, 
uh, this handler in this process, we just take the state, like we try to process the pieces before the pieces needed to transition the state machine. And then we get it and then we insert it and decide why to do what to do later on. Now, this is not a final, obviously, just I, I literally thought of this this morning. So there's a lot of things to figure out, like what to do with um, I know, problem reports and stuff like that. It still needs to be thought of. But ultimately, what this would lead up to is that when you get a message, okay, you got to match on it to kind of see, okay, what this message is and what you're supposed to do with it. But then you just pass in the message handler. You already have the message, right? Because you matched on it. You provide a state machine handler that will give you a state machine in a particular state. You might want to provide, the I know we might machine, State machine handler is, is um... It's the one that will take you the state machine out of whatever storage or cache you have and the one that's going to put it back. And we need an, an abstraction. We need an abstraction over that because the state machines, like each individual individual state machine and each individual state has a different type. So it would be best to kind of have that outside. Now here, this is a, basically the ID. I don't know if we necessarily need it to be generic. We might just use string. We might not. I don't know. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, the idea is that we can handle through this interface, the state machine handler, we can take care of, you know, depending on the outcome of the state machine, whether you get the new or the old one, we can handle putting it, in, just putting it back. You know, we can get it in the old state. We have all the pieces. We transition it and then we put it back. There's, a, there's one more. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting idea. I mean, typically I just need to um, we got a message, to the state machine handler, and yeah, that state machine handler. However, it needs to based on the message, it needs to uh, find that message in whatever storage it's stored. Not the message, it, the state machine. Oh yeah, it needs to find the state machine based on the message. Mm -hmm. And that can be mm -hmm. sometimes based on the message ID, sometimes it can be based on thread ID, sometimes maybe. I, I guess that there might be a few cases. Okay, let's see. So it, it finds the message, it needs to understand the store, it needs to understand how the state machines are stored in that store. Right, which uh, is what uh, the handler is for. And save it. But okay. I, I see like maybe two kind of problems. First is that like it will um, there might be a bit of a like inefficiency. Like since this is doing like stuff for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> like uh, first of all. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just quiet and uh... <laughs> yeah, no, this is a lot to take in, and you definitely need to, need to think about it. And it's putting a, also, a, void, like, a void. complete, so you'll need other pieces here. You might need, I don't know, a ledger type, a wallet type, some stuff like that. So there are other pieces that are needed, but like, the point, yeah, go ahead. Like, I guess the main thing I'm like, uh, think I'm considering is. Uh, a users uh, like might have like different uh, like you might want to have more data associated with the state machine for example than just the state machine itself like you want to maybe do some you know since especially since we have this uh, philosophy of like you shouldn't care about what serialized you know what serialized state machine looks like then if you uh -huh. want to, for example, keep a, you know, collect like some database of this, I don't know, uh, prover state machines, and you want to track for each of them, like a number of attributes, like was it verified? Uh, what was the values provided? And, you know, maybe you want to have indices on this field so we can like do filtering and searches and stuff like that. Then, then I'm worried like, uh, like, that this gonna dictate too much if the state machine handler this this get get insert thing is not gonna dictate too much about how the 
you know, the database schema or, you know, Mongo collection or whatever must look like. Uh, and I guess there's like some ideas. Why, why would it though? Mind. Sorry? Why would it? Um, it's, it's still a trait. You implement this on a type and you could have, you could store whatever you want in the type and you can design the methods to look ex exactly like you want. Like you don't necessarily, you were talking about, you know, storing some other metadata. If you could do that in this exact same method. Now, again, probably these are going to be async traits as well. Uh, I literally just drafted this, so there's a lot to, you know, to figure out. I, I, I can imagine like this being like a convenient, yeah, when you're staying in a Rust ecosystem, really, like you're writing on top of this in Rust, that must be great, or at least could be great. Uh, I wonder, I, I, I see that they will be like a lot more difficult to work with um, kind of and work, work with if you go through FFI, let's say, you know, you have a layers written no J in JavaScript and then mm -hmm. you have some like database handling inside Rust, but then maybe you have some own, you know, in JavaScript as well. It's kind of mm -hmm. like you don't know what's happening. And, and but yeah, okay. Like anyway, long-term like kind of first class is citizen is Rust and we are planning to like uh, you know long term if you want to write like issue very far in rust so this could be like pretty cool but if this is like some if this like the handler this stuff becomes kind of like you know literally like this is every vcx and and uh, then i'm thinking also then it, yeah, it wouldn't be great for FFI, and especially since lots of people are coming from from, from the mobile. I wonder who how this kind of you know how this would play with them. I don't know how they typically store the state machines. I think I think maybe um, George would have some interesting in in thoughts on this. I, I wonder what he would think. How how convenient from his perspective, or inconvenient? I don't know. Would it be? You have this kind of handler and you know kind of deal with persistence on the on on the rust le level maybe because i'm thinking like maybe you know maybe when george is working with state machines maybe he's putting it into some kind of ios store you know if he's if he's doing that from like upper levels somewhere mm -hmm. from the screen, right he gets a hits a message he updates the state machine and then he puts it into some sort of you know ios system store and we don't want to deal with i, I don't know I, I imagine we I, I don't know what's of support for like ios stuff you know from rust if you can even do that if you would even be able to write that kind of handle okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop you for a bit for a bit patrick mm -hmm. uh and i can give you the example of live um yeah. so for instance what we do in live cx if i could find it um it's somewhere around here uh, the one the core right so in in um libvcx right now what was it handle connection okay in libvcx what you actually have is you have these this cache where you store your objects and i believe um there were some functions for uh serializing and deserializing right the state machine mm -hmm. that could, that could be your state machine handler you don't necessarily have to store this in the database if you don't want oh, to. Okay. If you implement right. this custom type, which has some other methods like, that look like these, you know, mm -hmm. you basically copy paste these into your type. You expose them to FFI if you want, and that's it. And you do whatever you want in the FFI. I, th I, I don't think this is not flexible enough. I think this is actually, uh, kind of very flexible. And even the message handler, you can write your own if you have a particular use case and just process but then you, you it's basically a conscious decision that you make that you know what this the, the implementation that these guys provide is not suitable for me and i want to do some other crazy stuff um with with the message or whatever and that's your business um but it, like i said if you think about it ultimately what most people will do is they're gonna match on the message and then do the whatever state machine transition and then handle this result and what else needs to be done like it's in in i don't know maybe 
90 out of 100 repository that would be repositories that would be implementing our library, they would all do this exact same thing, which we could abstract away, make their lives easier. And also, you know, because for us, it's easy to deal with, with this kind of thing. We're the developers, we know what it means. But consumers, I can guarantee you, they're going to ask about it a lot. Okay. Well, maybe let's let's not uh, stretch it out for too long. I mean, I feel like this could be a lot longer. But let's also get like uh, George on this, and then uh, mm -hmm. like like is it, uh, like my, just my main concern is like maybe people want to do like storage and persistence from their respective domain, whether it's in like Java world, iOS world, Node.js world, or maybe I, I don't know that's my concern and maybe then second second concern is like actually um uh, and and let's yeah those could be another i guess like for, for discussion but another thought is like possible complication is like when you get a message typically like you pass that message to the state machine uh -huh. and then based on if like the processing somewhat completed you know you know you you once you know that the message has been processed by a state machine and you got some result, then you want to, uh, you know, using a pickup protocol, this kind of stuff, you want to update the mediator that, you know, you want to update the stat status of the message that you don't want to no longer process it. It, is, it has been processed. So maybe that would also have to be kind of considered and thought of if that can be abstracted away or, you know, how can we, or uh, how can we support that? Um, but I think that can basically also happen outside of this. So um, I don't yeah, know, I, like I, you could probably, yeah. and where most likely you would return some sort of a result here. So mm -hmm. if you got an error, you might not want to update the whatever the message in the um in the mediator but if you did get an okay or whatever then you can update it and say that it's processed right but then you need but to actually then, then you actually need to kind of propagate information about the retriability or not because maybe if it's retriable then you might want to you know like you know that you didn't succeed the state machine stayed in the previous state but you just want to retry mm -hmm. later and you will need to like you know get the message again uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, I think I actually thought about that, but it slipped my mind. Yeah, you probably want kind of the same thing in here, but without dealing with the state machine, right? You, so you just want to, okay, this is retriable. You can you can retry later, and this is the error, or it's aborted, and um, you know, or it's okay, like the the message was processed successfully. Mm -hmm. So it could be something like that. Um, and it will actually make sense, especially in, in the use case you, you provided. Mm. I think it's a very good point. But nevertheless, like even if even if you do something like that, I think not having to deal with the state machine is a big win for most of the consumers. Well, I'll, I'll think about it, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we let, let's think about it more. Uh, I need mm -hmm. to kind of get it through my mind, and and maybe sure. yeah, take some time to process. That's a that's a good idea, though. And uh, I mean, uh, um, I'm 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 saying like you know that uh, we found out as a library, which I think is the case at the moment pretty much but uh I, I i can imagine like having some like um rather a thin layer on top of like this like the these like library components we have and state machines to like offload something and then uh that could be like easier to use but at the same time there will be still those like granular components underneath that if somebody may right their own right way. but then what, I, what i'm trying to get at is that then we can basically design these state machines in a simpler fashion you know with the like completely uh without io 
because we would do them here. And people will also have an example, like, you know, maybe more um, seasoned developers that want to do stuff their own way. They would also have an example of what they need to do and how it needs to look like and how it works to kind of do it themselves if they want to. And I know they want to have, have their own handlers. Um, like, I, I don't think it's necessarily taking power out of people's hands, but as much as enabling them to kind of get things working faster. Um, and also kind of making our whole code much easier to, to reason with. Because the state machines right now do a lot of things and it, it's kind of painful. Whereas here we have the possibility of kind of layering things out in a much easier to follow way. And a much organized manner of dealing with the state machines as well. Mm. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the IO must be somewhere if it's not, if, if the IO of... Um... Yeah, no, it would be here, but this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the state machine until it transitions itself, so, or it transitions it. So for instance, like I was saying here, you would do whatever, I don't know, take, take any, any, any transition that you want. So why can it fail? It can fail because, I don't know, some, some stuff just doesn't add up or some IO error or whatever. Now, all these errors that can occur would be happening before you actually try to transition the state machine. The transition, the function on the state machine will only take the parameters it needs and compose the next state an unfallible operation. But the, the fallibility is basically taken out of the transitioning function and into this or maybe some other functions that this, this thing calls. So then you no longer I know, return the old state or whatever you do and or transition to whatever. It, it's, it's much easier to follow, I think. Hmm. Yeah, you, you might you, you might have some point, and I mean, still it would still uh, the that's a good point that you uh, said that you can still, for example, integrate this uh, with libvcx, which uh, you mm -hmm. know, we want to keep the Node.js support, and the state message handler can technically just for be for the in memory cache, and then you can do persistence in the database or whatever your own right. way. Away right, and it's a difference. Uh, also, a thing to maybe note about this um, is that the handler, like the state machine handler, any any state machine handler can basically be passed in here because it's a generic one, the function, and it's not an associated type like these things are. Um, so, if you just want to store your state machine differently, feel free to do it. Like I actually believe this is something consumers would implement. We wouldn't implement something for them. So, you mm -hmm. might have a different database, or you might have whatever. So, this is something the consumers would implement and just pass in here, um, just as maybe the transport. Now, this um, there's also a matter of debate. I know we're kind of stretching, but whether given this, this um, idea, we could still have maybe keep this transport trait and have them, or maybe just take in a closure and also send messages or try to send messages from here, uh, or maybe problem reports only, I don't know. And then people could still retry the message sending afterwards. So kind of making things more streamlined. I don't know, it's, it's, we're stretching again. So there's a lot to discuss about this, but mm. I just wanted to kind of present the, what, I, what I was thinking about. Now I'm gonna so stop this would, uh, this would, uh, sorry, can you, can you share it for back, back for just, uh, two more minutes? Okay, uh, sure. To get some last, conclude some last thoughts. Just gonna do kind of a little brain dump of my of my own. Uh, so there will be the state machine handler, uh, message handler. It gets message. It gets state machine. It gets message. It gets the handler. Handler can get message from somewhere. Store it back there. Okay. So and we have uh, pretty much we can share the same handler for. I guess in pretty much the same handler for many different uh, state machines, maybe with different configurations. So you might want to store different state machines in different tables or collections or files, whatever. Um, and then you get a message. Yeah, you, you process that. And this thing 
you, you get a let's say you get a what's interesting message you get a connection request message you you get a handler for you get a handler for connections um basically for that type of message mm -hmm. you might not even expect to find anything because somebody simply send you a connection request out of blue so in that case you wouldn't actually in, in that pro in that processing you would actually get something but you would process the message create a state machine you would insert the state machine you would have to uh actually you might actually want uh i guess the yeah the insert the inserts in that case the inserts should actually like return some sort of id and then process process uh, i guess should also kind of uh, propagate it because it creates some new 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 record in database you want the caller have uh, some control information about it uh so that'll be like actually interesting case but then what happens then you get a request you in the processing message okay so you create some placeholder state machine in initial state it's a connection request you maybe have to resolve their did maybe it's somewhere on some ledger or whatever they it can be pretty much anything so you do did resolution in the processing uh you within the what so that's on some ledger io you create the keys in your wallet at some wallet io and then lastly like you generate the response for this um generate generate the response a connection response message you send it you find that uh sending message failed because you are uh out of uh internet connection temporarily you might have some i guess retry logic in the i guess the processor uh, that's the kind of thing which should be probably configure configurable uh, so i'm sorry for interrupting i think we can at best try to send it once and people can try to resend it later on like we're still going to generate the message that's it's still going to be the way the state machines would be so you generated the response to a connection request you transition the state machine it contains the response we can try to send it once but then people can also retrieve the state machine from the database themselves maybe have some sort of background task that uh, i know if you didn't if you don't get the response to your last reply for or if the uh, state machine hasn't been updated in two days then maybe try to resend the message if okay. there is a message so, to resend so we would still um like be um we would still keep that constraint of not doing like the send response io in the process method we would only we do could it we could do it once but we don't guarantee that they will actually you know do anything or like i said the, the thing with the the state machine states is that you, we can send the message but we'll never have the confirmation that it was received so yeah by all means, and we might have like the the thing with um having the ability to send messages here is that it might be convenient in the case that we get a, a problem report that we it might need it to be sent so we could give that to users mm, actually you know what that might be a better idea okay maybe we don't do any message sending at all maybe we just give the resulting messages to the user so, um, good point because hmm. then you would have to if you if there's like two outcomes of process like you get connection requests and basically there's two outcomes like either the response was send or not send then i imagine after after calling process me as a caller i have to check what actually happened which state i am and if i'm not in the you know the i don't know state which signals successful sending then i have to kind of retry myself possibly or your trial later and it's kind of like complexity so yeah i think the 
message sending, I would keep that out of the process. Like yeah, we could probably keep that out. Keep sure. that one, keep, make it responsible. So so in that case, this would encapsulate the ledger. Just and the transition. Right. Yeah. And yeah, like getting the pieces the to translate the machine. And and the machine. Sorry. Yeah, so this process method would basically encapsulate like database read and write of the state machine before and mm -hmm. after. And in the in the middle, that would be processing of the received message, possibly some sort of like uh, ledger uh, like uh, interactions and mm -hmm. uh, and like wallet interactions, right. style, generating keys. Right. Or okay. Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Yeah, and technically, like uh, if you actually, if you actually don't, yeah, if you want, uh, if you actually don't want, you know, uh, the message, the the handler to deal with the database, you can always kind of provide really mock kind of state machine handler, which would Yes. Basically do nothing. Like just memory slot somewhere and it would uh right. write a mess get the state machine and write it or just write it if nothing was there in the first place, which is also the case with the connection request where you don't actually you receive the message but you don't have any state machine to load up yet. Right. Hmm. Yeah, this could maybe uh, like provide a kind of uniform uh, layer on top of state machine. This thing that Mira was coming up with, but uh, but it didn't seem uniform and like uh, it seems like asymmetric. Maybe this could be the kind of a shared interface for yeah, I think we can definitely achieve it for the I/O which needs to be done on top of state machines since we want to run right. with. Yeah, I was thinking about the the framework kind of thing. I think, I mean, in the end, people would still have to do this themselves and match on the arrays message and whatnot. Um, but I just think, like the the overall, like we can abstract away some stuff that are really common, are kind of our responsibility, and are not really something that consumers should deal with. You know, mm. like the actual message processing while also making the whole interfaces nicer. All anyway, right, I'll, I'll think more about it. Maybe, yeah. you know, also consider what you said and all the possible use cases, kind of draft a, a more complete a, API, but. Yeah, let, let's leave it at uh, this. And uh, I think we have lots of- Yeah, we can discuss it next week or something. Yeah, and I think uh, this will be, <laughs> This must be uh, like uh, uh, compulsory uh, listening for <laughs> for George and Amira, so they can get uh, inputs on this discussions. And and I think like you are up to something, uh, and I think like Mira also like uh, m might also find some some parallels with the problems. You know, he was struggling in this process uh, method, which kind of would uniformly could potentially uniformly encapsulate those the the complexity you want to extract out of state machines put them somewhere on top and maybe this message right. handler could be that layer right okay all right that was uh that was it then and i think we have one more item in agenda wasn't it ah no no no, no i don't not. think so <laughs> good good false alarm fortunately okay so uh you guys are all free uh now and hopefully i don't know uh, at least like uh you, you took something out of this i, I don't know if you were listening actively it might be kind of like uh uh i mean com confusing or like advanced we already have like lots of context about what we are doing and you're just kind of like meeting aries v6 initially so uh, hopefully it was any 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 good any useful for you as well. Uh, yes, I mean, 
it, it's sort of like passive learning, I guess. Mm. Yeah, you like just kind of collect the glimpse of like kind of pattern here and there, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for uh, bearing this really long call and uh, have a great day and wonderful weekend with this coming. See you yeah. next time. Thank you. Sure. Have a good one.